where a door just opened and I had enough support from people who were just encouraging. So so here I am, uh, you know, not very familiar with the process, but like in anything, you know, you, you do your research and, and you get into it. And it's actually more complicated than what people think. But, you know, yeah. normally when you hear about people having issues with petitions, it's usually, you know, strong, uh, strong uh, signers or, you know, not enough signatures. And, and that isn't a problem here at all with any of the new candidate uh, petitions. Uh, the things that we're going to be uh, speaking on today are, uh, the first objection was just uh, the fact that we stated an incorrect date for the um, actual date of the consolidated election instead of the primary. So I said we, we put an incorrect date, but I, I shouldn't actually say that because really there hasn't been a primary for the, uh, the village president as far back as I can find research on. Okay, so we know that the the documents go back to 2003. There's nothing found about a mayoral, uh, uh, you know, primary at all. So with that being said, we're hoping that that gets overturned. The second objection is the fact that our petitions were found by paper clips. Um, so that is a big um, deal apparently, and it sounds so minor. So we're hoping that that also gets overturned uh, by case law. Uh, that we will cite. Um, the third objection is just residency. It was where, where we live. There's the objectioner saying that we did not reside in the, the, you know, the location on the petition. So all very technical things. You know, we all filed in time. We all had our, our correct number of signatures. As a matter of fact, there's a combined total of almost 500 signatures between the three candidates. So what's at stake here today is the simple fact that, you know, at, at the, if the um, objectioner's uh, objection, if that isn't thrown out, we have almost 500 people that literally will not have a choice on their ballot. But yeah, if the right. objectioner's objection stays, you know, we'll have two people that basically will get to decide, you know, that there will only be one candidate for people to choose from. So we feel that there is a great deal of um, people out there that just will not be able to have points as we just hope today to make sure that all of these objections get dismissed um, so that people can have a choice. We're not, again, we're not asking people to show their support today for a candidate, just a fact of voices on the ballot. Yeah, so uh, as an example, and I, we were talking about this yesterday, um, and again, folks, uh, joining me right now is Tracy Shaw Peterman from Sherman. Uh, Tracy's running for village president uh, in the election coming up. Is it April of next year, Tracy? Is that right? Yes, April 2nd. Yeah, so uh, Tracy, yeah, Tracy's running, uh, Vicki Jenkins, Josh Carter, I think. Um, with that said, again, Tracy, full disclosure, is family. Uh, she's married to one of my nephews. and. Uh, she is also a client of mine, uh, but I wanted to bring Tracy on not as a political uh, process of, of talking about her campaign or her candidacy, uh, her position on policy, more uh, related to just letting the village of Sherman know that, and I, and I being part of that, that is in the community, that we want choices, and it's not like there's a lot of people that want choices from Tracy talking about who's signed the petition. And that, uh, so for example, Tracy, you talked about one of the technicalities is someone uh, bringing up the issue of paper clipping nomination forms as opposed to what are you supposed to do, state form or something like that, or what's the difference there, what's the issue? Um, well, you know, obviously there's, there's interpretation uh, to, to say is it staple, is it paper clip, is it, you know, two hole punch at the top, a little binding. Uh, you know, the whole point of the, uh, the statute that, that I believe is, is that, that the petitions just need to be, you know, bound together so that when they're, when they're presented, they're all intact and that nothing's missing and things can't get slipped in or slipped out. Uh, yeah. So, you know, it's really up for interpretation, which is why there's, there's a lot of case law on it. Um, so, yeah. So, um, so the, key, the key point here is for anyone listening, and a lot of listeners this morning, of course, may not be from the village of Sherman, but if you know someone in Sherman, or if you are in Sherman, uh, 
just let folks know that there is um, right away this morning, here in about an hour, uh, at 8.30 a.m. at the Village Hall in Sherman, which literally is uh, right around the corner from my house, that uh, there will be a, what do they call it, Tracy? Is it going to be like a hearing or what, what actually is, it, is, is, the, is the gathering called? Well, it, you know, the Municipal Office of Electoral Board is what the actual board is called. And it, there'll be a hearing today, and then there'll be a subsequent hearing Monday at noon to decide, uh, you know, the ruling over all of the items that are presented today. So they have the meeting today, and then, so yeah, I think the Monday at noon hearing or meeting is new from what you and I spoke about yesterday. So now I guess what listeners need to be aware of is the fact that it may be tough for a lot of folks to get, of course, leave work or to take the time to come to the village hall or come to that meeting Monday at noon. So it's probably really relevant, very important that those that are listening get out there today, correct? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. There'll be an opportunity for uh, public comment at the end of today's meeting. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, a, it's important that if you want that decision that you, or that choice uh, to be able to decide between uh, candidates, multiple candidates, that you absolutely get out there, come to the Village Hall at 8.30 and have your, vote, your voice heard. Okay, sounds great, Tracy. Hey, thanks for joining us. I wanted to give you a little bit of air time. And again, uh, I wish you the best. I just want to make sure that the best for the those of Sherman, I will say, folks, again, not especially family, Tracy, I gotta give you credit the fact that the work that you do and that you have done the last couple of two or three years between the chamber at the uh, village at the chamber at the Sherman level and then the homecoming and all the work that you do as a real estate professional and helping folks in what I believe is a great community with a great school district and a great place to raise a family. Uh, you do an amazing job and your work ethic is second to none. So I wish you the best. I appreciate you, Bill. And uh, if I don't see you before Christmas, you and your family have a great holiday and uh, safe travels back home, okay? Absolutely. Merry Christmas to you guys. Take care. And folks, thanks for joining us this morning. Tracy came in and talked about that meeting. So join that meeting this morning, 8.30 a.m. at the Village Hall in Sherman. Let's take our second break. This is Money Talk. I'm Bill Peter, I'm your host.